famously known as the first among patriots, and tucked along a hillside in the town of Brookneal, you'll find a beautiful place that overlooks the Stanton River Valley. And that place is the last home and burial place of Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry's Red Hill, his last home and retirement plantation, where he lived out his very last years of his life. And as you tour the property, you'll find the historic buildings reflect life as it was back when Patrick Henry lived here. It was here when he bought the property in 1794. Bonnie George is one of the many volunteers who offer a living history experience to those who visit. She showed me around the grounds for a look inside the life of Virginia's first governor and the country's great patriot when he lived here until his death in 1799. There are seven historic buildings in all, and it's here on this property and inside these buildings where you'll find the largest collection of Patrick Henry artifacts and memorabilia in the world. This is Patrick Henry's law office, and it looks today as it would have when Patrick Henry was here. Inside his law office, you'll find an 18th century desk, a document press, even a replica of John Henry's 1770 map of Virginia on the wall. You can also tour the inside of the plantation home nearby. Inside, you find it has been reconstructed to reflect the simple one and a half story home that housed between nine and 11 of his family members. Visitors can also watch and participate in several activities as the volunteers demonstrate 18th century living. Volunteers like Bill Rowland, who showed me how tools were made and repaired back in Henry's time. What are you making? I'm making an L head nail. There was no Lowe's or <laughs> Home Depot around to buy a nail, so if you needed a nail, you made it. You made it yourself. Yep. In nope. the wintertime, the women would come down to the blacksmith shop, and they would make nails. Would you like to try one? I would love to try one. Can okay. I? Okay. Yeah. All right. We can do that. Okay. What do I have to do? There's 1,100 degrees. Hammer out a point, hammer on the end of it to make a point. On the end. Okay. Okay, good enough. Now then, pound it straight down. Straight down. Okay. That work? Yep. And okay. here's the finished product, and right? An L-shaped exactly nail. An L-shaped nail. How did I do? Pretty good? You did very well. You may join the ladies this winter down here. Okay. And make nails. <laughs> slave cabin was once home to Harrison and Millie, a coachman and cook for the Henry family. And what happens in here? All right, we're making our clothing in here. We're spinning wool, and the wool comes from the sheep, and this is what it looks like when it comes off the sheep. Wow, look at that. And then we wash it and soak it and wash it and soak it until we get something like this brighter. Fascinating. Okay, so then once we so, have our our wool, mm -hmm. we can go ahead and Now we're going to spin, spin it. Spin our wool. Okay. And we're making thread. All right. So can I give this a try? Mm -hmm. so, see, I got a lot of twists. Slide the hand. Okay, that <laughs> Now pinch it. Pinch All it right. down here where yeah. it's twisted with okay. your right hand. Yeah. Pull this. Mm -hmm. Now pinch it again. Okay. And, and then pull. pull. Back. So it's a bunch of pinching and pulling. Mm -hmm. Mine isn't the best, but then basically what we would do is we'd take this and we'd go over to the loom. Is that right? As soon as the bobbin is full. Okay. From how clothes were made, it was on to see how the food was prepared. The kitchen is complete with an open hearth to show how the cooking was done, often in a Dutch oven, and hot coals. One of the main reasons it was always built separately from the home. And the most important thing is to build a fire 
and fire is uh, in the tending of the fire and doing the coals and everything else are critical in the process of being successful in open hearth cooking. As you walk these grounds, you truly feel like you're watching life as it was in Henry's time, even down to the Osage orange tree on the property that's estimated to be around 300 years old. So Bonnie, tell me about this tree. It is huge. This is our Osage orange tree. It's just a treasure. That tree is over 340 years old. It is the oldest Osage orange tree, the oldest and the largest in North America. Back in the day, Patrick Henry probably sat underneath this tree and right. enjoyed a nice respite. Right. He, um, we, we know that the tree, since it's over 340 years old now, it was a mature tree when Patrick Henry lived here. So um, we always tell the children that he sat under this tree. The tree is right here at the house. So he would sit under the tree, drink spring water, play with his grandchildren, and then played his violin. Final stop was a visit to the burial site of Patrick Henry and his second wife, Dorothea. All here preserved and maintained to educate and enrich those who visit, and it's all just a day's drive away.